Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Ishin Tyro 109. In this video I'm going to go over the contents of this kit, assemble the quadcopter and compare it with the Ishin Tyro 99 which I've already pre-assembled. Inside the box you can find all the required parts for building a plug and play quadcopter which means that you will need to get your own radio receiver and of course you will need to assemble the kit yourself. So first of all you can find a set of stickers a battery velcro strap, the frame carbon parts and side aluminum plates, a bag with zip ties, one set of four bladed 5040 propellers, a short pagoda antenna with an RPSMA antenna connector, the famous Ishin AK47 kitchen holder and carbon fiber wrenches, four heat rings for securing the motor wires, a carbon fiber battery bottom plate and foam landing pads, two bags with all the needed spacers and screws, an XT60 battery lead and the required connectors for the electronic parts, two clockwise and two counterclockwise Ishin branded 2400KV2206 motors, an F4 flight controller, a 30 ampere 4 in 1 BLLES ESC, and as you can see, it comes with a 25 volts 470 microfarad capacitor already pre soldered to the battery pads, the Ishin XF5804 VTX. It features smart audio, has a selectable output strength of 25, 200 and 600 milliwatts. It has an M6 antenna connector and has 30 by 13 mounting holes that will enable you to mount it on top of the stack. In addition, you're also getting a 90 degrees MCX to a 90 degrees RPSMA antenna connector. Finally, the camera is the Cadex EOS 2. This is the 4x3 NTSC version and it comes inside a nano to full size camera adapter. Now I'm going to quickly assemble the quadcopter and I will see you in a bit in order to show the results and compare it with the Ishin Tyro 99. So now, as you can see, the Tyro 109 is ready and it looks better than the Tyro 99 because the first thing you notice about the Tyro 99 is that the VTX is just exposed on the top of the quadcopter and in case of a crash, you can destroy it. And on the Tyro 109, the VTX is safely protected inside the frame. In addition, unlike this VTX, the VTX on the Tarot 109 supports Smart Audio using TBS Smart Audio Protocol, so you can easily configure it using Betaflight OSD. Except the difference in the VTX, the other differences between the two quadcopters are that the Tarot 99 is using 2206 2150 kV motors, and the 109 is using 2206 2400 kV motors, which should give us about 10% more thrust. Another difference is that the Tyrant 109 is using a different FPV camera than the Tyrant 99. So on the front of the Tyrant 109, you can find the excellent Cadex Turbo US2 Nano FPV camera, but unfortunately mine is defective and is not working. The camera is also better protected than the camera of the Tyrant 99, which is in my experience a pretty cheap camera and doesn't perform well. 
In addition, the Tyrant 109 is bundled with a single set of four bladed 5040 propellers, whereas with the Tyrant 99, they're getting plenty of bi bladed 5038 propellers. And finally, with both versions, you're getting a Pagoda antenna, however, the Tyrant 99 is bundled with a longer one. Both quadcopters are using the same frame, the same 4 in 1 ESC, and the flight controller. And by the way, the number stands for the price of the kit and not for the dimensions of the frame or something like that. So the 109 cost $109 and the Tyrant 99 cost $99. The total weight of the Tyrant 109 without the battery bottom plate and a battery is 321.7 grams. So it's a little bit lighter than the Tyrant 99, which weighs 325 grams. Just like the Tyrant 99, the wheelbase of the frame is 210 millimeters. And the thickness of the four interchangeable arms is 5 mm. As I mentioned before, one of the biggest advantages of the Tyrant 109 over the 99 is that the VTX features smart audio and of course that it is well protected inside the frame. So now let's turn the quadcopter on. And unfortunately the camera is not working and I did check it with another camera and the problem is with the camera and not with the flight controller. So you can only see the OSD overlaid on the screen. Now the VTX is set to 25 milliwatt and it's using the TBS Smart Audio Protocol. So if you want to configure it, you need to select the VTX SA menu. Now the VTX is set to 25 milliwatts and I'm getting around 32 milliwatts. Now it's set to 200 milliwatts and I'm getting around 250 milliwatts. And now it's set to 600 milliwatts and I'm getting around 650 milliwatts. Overall, as far as I can tell, the Tyrant 109 seems like a pretty good option for a beginner because building it is pretty easy and will require you a very minimal soldering work. And basically all you need to do is just to solder the motors and the battery pads. And if you want to use the smart audio feature of the VTX, you will need to connect it to a free UART port on the flight controller. One thing that I didn't show in this video is how to configure the motors. So I'm going to put a link over here to a guide where I show how to configure them using the BL Heli Suite. Finally, if you're debating which version to get, I think that it's worth adding the extra $10 and get the Tyrant 109 because it gives you a better value for money, the VTX is well protected inside and it features the smart audio protocol, and in addition, the camera of the Tyrant 109 is better protected inside the cage, and the quality of this camera, of course when it's working, is better than the quality of this pretty lousy camera. Of course, I also need to test both quadcopters, and it's going to happen in the next two weeks, and then I'm going to post some flight footage. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos, and goodbye.